President Obama recently met with French President Francois Hollande in Washington, D.C. to discuss matters of international security. In his remarks, President Hollande said that the root of Islamist terrorism is in Syria and in Iraq. Now, if you know anything about the administration that called the Fort Hood massacre an instance of workplace violence, you know that Team Obama does not like the phrase Islamist terrorism. The word Islamist is to the Obama administration what the name Voldemort was to Hogwarts. But the leader of what used to be the free world is no longer satisfied with censoring himself and his own lackeys. He's now expanded his censorship to include other world leaders. Listen to the audio of both President Hollande and his translator suddenly cut out just as he gets to his comments about Islamist terrorism. We are also making sure that between Europe and the United States there can be a very high level coordination. But we also were aware that the roots of terrorism Et nous devons agir en Irak et en Syrie. C'est ce que nous faisons dans le cadre de la coalition. Et euh, nous constatons que Daesh est en recul. We note that Daesh is losing ground thanks to the strikes we've been able to launch with the coalition. Here's where things get interesting. MRC TV posted the clip from the White House website and showed from the transcript that the Obama administration censored President Hollande. A ton of news sites ran with the story, prompting this response from the White House. A technical issue with the audio during the recording of President Hollande's remarks led to a brief drop in the audio recording of the English interpretation. As soon as this was brought to our attention, we posted an updated video online here with the complete audio, which is consistent with the written transcript we released yesterday. So according to the White House, there was a drop in the audio recording of President Hollande and this audio drop led to a drop in the recording of the translator. Now, before we do any sort of detective work here, we should be awfully suspicious. What are the odds that a film crew that regularly records videos for the most powerful man on earth would suddenly goof up at precisely the moment President Hollande says something that the Obama administration has deemed forbidden? Pretty slim. But as someone who works with video and audio, I can say that mistakes do happen, and there are technical issues that can lead to a brief audio drop. If there's a bad wire in President Hollande's mic, or someone knocks something loose on the soundboard, sound might be briefly lost, the translator might not hear what he said, and so she wouldn't even be able to translate. But if there were an audio drop during the recording, there should be a gap in the audio of the recording. Disturbingly, the White House reposted the exact same video with all of the audio miraculously intact. Listen to the full audio. We are also making sure that between Europe and the United States, there can be a very high level coordination. But we also were aware that the roots of terrorism, Islamist terrorism, is in Syria and in Iraq. We therefore have to act both in Syria and in Iraq, and this is what we're doing within the framework of the coalition. And we note that Daesh is losing ground thanks to the strikes we've been able to launch with the coalition. Now, if the audio were actually lost due to a mechanical issue, why does the White House have the full audio, both of President Hollande and of the translator? Supposedly, his audio dropped out and she didn't even translate that portion because she didn't hear it. But it gets worse. You see, if there really were some sort of malfunction that caused a break in the recording, as the White House claims, and someone later found a backup recording of President Hollande, the White House could simply insert the full audio of what he said and then re-record the translation. But that's not what happened here. If you listen to the restored version, there's no break or pause in the audio or even in the background noise. So the missing portion wasn't spliced in from a backup source, it was there from the beginning. 
Just to make sure I wasn't dealing with two separate recordings in case they replaced the entire audio with some sort of backup audio, I lined up the two videos. I took the restored version and I lined it up with the original release with the missing audio. When you watch it here in a moment, you can see the restored version on the screen with a smaller screen that has the original release. I lined up the two clips, and at first the audio is perfectly in sync. You can't even tell that you're listening to two separate audio tracks because they match perfectly. But when we get close to President Alain's remarks about Islamist terrorism, you suddenly hear a slight echo because the two audio tracks are slightly off. Then the audio sounds normal again because one of the two tracks cuts out. When it starts back up after a few seconds, there's once again a slight echo because the tracks are just a little out of sync. And then suddenly the tracks line up again perfectly so that you can't even tell you're listening to two tracks at the same time. Have a listen to see what I mean. We are also making sure that between Europe and the United States, there can be a very high level coordination. But we also were aware that the roots of terrorism, Islamist terrorism, is in Syria and in Iraq. We therefore have to act both in Syria and in Iraq, and this is what we're doing within the framework of the coalition. And we note that Daesh is losing ground thanks to the strikes we've been able to launch with the coalition. Didn't the White House claim that because President Alon's audio mysteriously dropped, there was a drop in the recording of the English translation? You just heard that there wasn't any drop in either recording. And this wasn't a backup recording, it was the same audio file. So the only real excuse for the White House at this point would have to be that, yes, the videographers got a perfect recording the first time, but a small section of audio somehow disappeared when they uploaded it to YouTube or something. Now, even though there are multiple technical issues that can lead to dropped audio, I am aware of no technical issue that can take a perfectly good recording, randomly cut out both the audio of the speaker and the audio of the translator, and shift the bookend slightly so that they're a little off, while retaining perfect audio both before and after the glitch. That missing audio, along with the slight shifts of portions just before and after the missing audio, means one thing. Someone tampered with the audio. Three takeaways. First, instead of admitting that there was tampering, the Obama administration blamed the censorship on a technical issue. Who'd have thought that the same team that gave us, if you like your insurance, you keep your insurance, period, would be so quick to lie to us? Second, President Obama refuses to utter the words Islamist terrorism because he thinks it will legitimize ISIS. What sort of egomaniac in chief would think that his words are so important the mere uttering of a phrase would legitimize a massive terrorist state? Are ISIS jihadists waiting for Obama to legitimize their actions? Are there people on the fence here in the US who might be swayed to the dark side if someone in the Obama administration uses the word Islamist? How much street cred does President Obama think he really has these days? Third. If the United States is now officially more politically correct than the president of France, if President Hollande is now too aggressive and too combative for our leaders, so much so that his audio needs to be edited to keep his harsh and offensive words from reaching our soft and delicate ears, the West is in a lot of trouble. If you don't like being lied to, click here to subscribe.